Hey, this is Tyler for bleepingjeep.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use your battery charger to remove rust. Now this is uh, through a process called electrolysis. It's really simple and it's really good for uh, mechanical parts, things that, that just sandblasting won't fix, like, like let's say a rusty set of pliers or a, a part on your Jeep that, that has some internal pieces that need to move that have corroded inside. This will actually get the rust out of them. But first, I want you to subscribe to the channel and I want you to click the thumbs up so we can keep these videos coming. Thanks. Okay, to be able to uh, use electrolysis to get the rust off your part, it's, it's really, you really don't need a lot of stuff. This is all stuff you probably got around your garage. You'll need a pair of needle nose vice grips or some other way to, to get a hold of your part. An anode, and this needs to be made of steel or iron. Um, we found that rebar works the absolute best for this, so I recommend just a, a little short piece of rebar like that. A board or something else that does not conduct electricity, but is wide, amount, wide enough to go over the mouth of your bucket, like that. A quick clamp or a C-clamp, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. Washing soda, not baking soda, but washing soda. Um, this is going to basically increase the conductivity of the water and make all this work. A bucket of water that's big enough to accommodate your part. And then just a battery charger. This is a cheapo from Walmart. And that's all you need. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, why electrolysis? Um, it sounds a little hokey pokey, but... Let's say you had a part like this. Now I just went out back and found this lying in the dirt. This looks like it was some kind of an old door latch. Um, and obviously completely frozen from the rust over the years sitting out there in the dirt. So, yeah, you know, I mean I could sandblast this and paint it, but would it get the functionality back? Probably not. So where I found this to be really useful is say uh, say you left a pair of pliers or another tool out over the winter and you find it in the spring and it's completely rusted and you can't get it to work. We've actually been able to get oh, I found an old set of uh, fencing pliers that had been out in the weather for who knows how many years and we were actually able to get them to function again. So a great thing about electrolysis too is that if you've got a, a really big and weird shaped part like let's say springs or let's say like a, a hitch like this or even a honking big bumper like this really you can uh, you can do anything you you need to as long as you got a big enough tank so really the the sky's the limit with this stuff or I guess more accurately, the size of your tank is going to be the limiting factor. I haven't even heard of a guy that did an entire trailer frame in his swimming pool using uh, his uh, stick welder as the power source. Of course, I also heard that he no longer has a swimming pool because he is divorced and single, but your mileage may vary. Okay, so we got our bucket of water here. We're going to add just about a tablespoon is all it takes. It really does not take a whole lot of this washing soda. So, I don't know about that much. We're going to dissolve that into the water. What I've done here now is I've taken the part that I want to de-rust. I've just clamped it in my needle nose vice grips and then I have clamped my vice grips to this block of wood and that's going to allow me now to submerge this part and that'll hold it suspended in the water and away from the anode. Alright now we're going to insert the anode and you can just lean this in the corner. You got to make sure that these two parts do not touch or you basically short circuit this. So you can lean it in the corner 
If you've got big, strange, weird shaped parts, what we've done in the past is taken a piece of PVC, drilled holes in it, and slid it over this anode and put the anode down in there just to make sure that it couldn't contact some of the more odd shaped parts that we've done. All right, now you can go ahead and attach the clips to your battery charger. Positive has to go on the node, negative on the part. And you can just connect it to the vice grips. It's going to go ahead and conduct just fine. Now the reason you have to set this up, my understanding is that electrons tend to flow from negative to positive. So we want that flow of electricity to pull the rust off of the part and over onto the anode. If you switch these around, you're going to de-rust the piece of rebar and it's all going to stick to your part. So it's very important positive on the node, negative on the part. Okay, you're going to set your battery charger to this lowest 12 volt 2 amp setting. Okay, I'm trying to get this to focus up close here. I hope that's working. This part's been in here for less than two minutes and you can already see the bubbles. See the bubbles down here? So it's already working. We're going to go ahead and leave this part in there overnight and uh, there'll be a nice nas nasty filmy gook on top here but uh, we'll let this work for about I don't know 12 to 24 hours and then we'll come back and we'll check on it. Look at the junk already starting to collect around that rod. This is after only about 10 minutes. Look how nasty that water's already looking. All right, so it's the next day. You can see that thick layer of scum on top. That's a good sign. That's all rust that's come off of this part. So we're gonna pull it out and take a look. May have to let it sit in there a little bit longer, but uh, we'll check and see. That may be enough. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and we'll see. Let's get a look at the anode. See this stuff? And I'll just wipe that off and we can reuse this rebar thousands and thousands of times. Starting to look a little better, huh? So you saw me hit that with the wire wheel. It took me two or three minutes. Look at the difference. Just in the surface appearance, look at the difference. But now here's the real place that uh, electrolysis shines and that's in restoring functionality. Now I haven't lubed this or anything. I pulled it out of the water, hit it with a wire wheel and watch this. Not only did we get the function back, it's even the spring in it is even working. Looking at that first video, how many of you would have ever believed that pivot would still be working right now, let alone this well? And that worked last night while I was home watching a movie. Now electrolysis does have its limitations, so let's go over a few of those. Electrolysis will not remove paint unless there's rust underneath it and then it just actually removes the rust underneath the paint. Electrolysis does not remove grease. Electrolysis will not work on cats. Well, that's it, guys. That's how you get rest off with your battery charger. Uh, don't forget to go check out uh, bleepinjeep.com for all the best how-to videos on the Internet. And uh, also click subscribe and thumbs up so we can keep these videos coming. I wonder if electrolysis would do an entire truck.
don't know. Now all this washing soda is really to do is just to increase the conductivity of the water and that facilitates this uh, chemical process of electrolysis. It's going to make the uh, the rust really pop off your parts that you're... Uh... <laughs> that sounds terrible. Don't forget to... Uh... Yeah, 